grub started, um, I used to work for an international development charity called WaterAid, uh, and I, I was lucky enough to kind of document stories um, in communities that we worked in, so mostly in Africa and Asia. Uh, and my job was to go and spend time in a community where um, they've either uh, haven't got a clean water and sanitation, or water aid has just finished, um, and they have clean water and sanitation. So I used to spend you know a couple of weeks in communities here and there. And the first time I tried insects was in Malawi. Uh, it was the beginning of the rainy season, where they get um, flying ants, termites essentially, um, coming out, and kids were going crazy catching them. I didn't really know what was going on until later on that evening where they brought out some of the local homebrew and a plate full of these kind of fried termites. Uh, I've never really, I mean, I was a little bit of a, a fussy when I was young, but I kind of grew out of that. And now, I mean, obviously setting up an insect business, I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to food. So I, I, I dove straight in and I thought, oh, that's pretty nice. I didn't really think myself, you know, of it until it was probably a, maybe a year later where I read an article in the National Geographic. Someone bought it for me as a present, it was a really good present, and there was an article on the nutritional um, values of insects. So I was like, okay, well, I've tried them, and I didn't really realise they were that nutritious. And then the last thing was, um, we're obviously working for water aid, a lot of our focus is on um, clean drinking water, and um, there's often an argument about uh, a lot of the water that's used in agriculture, especially, you know, raising livestock um, like cattle yeah. could be water that it could be used for drinking um, and then someone came in to do a talk water aid have these kind of lunchtime talks and someone came in and was talking about um, the amount of water that's used in agriculture and he mentioned insects because yeah. obviously they require um, not only less water but they require less land and feed as well and um, they're generally just a lot more efficient at converting feed into protein yeah uh, so it was like, okay, well, they taste good, they're nutritious, um, and they're sustainable. So it was just like, I don't know why, I don't know why it hasn't been done. And the obvious reason is, is you know, our sensibilities here in the UK and the West, we have a perception about insects being, you know, creepy crawlies or you know, a little bit disgusting and dirty. Um, so it's about how it was marketed, and that's what we kind of decided that we would give grub a go. background is in marketing that's what I did with water aid and I just think like sushi was you know when it first came along it was about how it was marketed before it actually broke through and Yo Sushi is a good example of that where you know the whole experience with the conveyor belt they made it mainstream and you know obviously we're one of the first to be doing this and we really kind of spent a lot of time you know thinking about how we market it how we position it and how we brand it to a point where um, it, people are kind of more likely to kind of buy into the notion of eating insects yeah. rather than moving away from the celebrity get me out of here push tucker trial style we wanted to actually make it you know um, kind of in a traditional way where it's eaten all around the world well when we decided to do the marketing and the positioning was um, they're eating in, in Asia and I did a bit of travelling around Asia after I left Water Aid to do a bit of research. I mean yeah. really it was just a, a track, you know, I wanted to bum around for a yeah. few months before doing anything and I, I justified it and I wanted to try, you know, the insects in the traditional way and actually it was really helpful because it helped inspire the, um, the kind of the way we're doing it now. So traditional kind of Thai dishes using insects and ingredients. So. For example, in um, we've got the Negrop, which is the crispy insect noodles. Normally they use um, brown crab meat, but instead of brown crab meat, we use buffalo worms. So okay. it's like traditional Thai, Thai food with, with a little twist. And also the, another thing that we kind of thought was quite important is that the way they're eating around the world is um, they're eating with a beer or they're eating with a you know glass of, you know a bit of sake. Mm. They're eating as an appetizer before a main meal. Generally, mm. they're not eating as the main meal. Mm. And there are a few occasions where they are. But what we wanted to do is kind of um, do it in like a kind of tapas style bar, yeah. where you're getting sharing plates. You know, it's an experience, and but also it's paired with drinks. And that's why we contacted Chang, and you know they were luckily they kind of saw. You know, they believed in the idea and decided yeah. to sponsor us. So that's the way we've kind of positioned it. Our, our kind of 
kind of our concept is based on the fact that this is the way they're eating all around the world yes. um, and it's just about kind of positioning it right word of mouth once people realize they taste good we kind of we feel that London especially you know yeah. it, people are open-minded enough to kind of try them as they are and then once that word starts spreading then yeah you know it's just about getting over that initial step you know I mean yeah. a lot of people try it and it's that first bite you know um, which they struggle with and then after that they you know you can tell that they're enjoying themselves <laughs> reception was really good it was really nice for me and Neil because um, we've kind of done a few tasting sessions with friends and family yeah. uh, and obviously friends and family are, uh, are going to be prone to be polite about these things yeah. um, we had real, a lot of confidence in our menu but actually for, for the first time last night this is the first time we, we launched the public and um, so the reaction we got last night um, was really kind of reaffirming for us because you could tell people were actually genuinely enjoying it and some of the comments we got back was just amazing. I can't imagine people replacing their steak yeah. with insects. I mean, I, I really like steak. I, I, you know, I eat steak as well. But what we're kind of trying to say is that we're not being naive about it. We're not saying, you know, eat insects every day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Because, yeah. I mean... It's not realistic. It's not realistic, and we don't do it ourselves. So if we don't do it, we can't ask other people to do it. Um, so I guess what we're kind of saying is that even if you know you kind of use it as an alternative, you know, like in your stir fry, instead of using prawns one week, you know, use grasshoppers or mm. you know use crickets, and they taste just as good. And you know, obviously even with fish at the moment, you know, with not only kind of um, shrimp farming, prawn farming, but also um, sorry shrimp and prawn trawling yeah there's also the farms that are ecologically unfriendly so um you know by kind of cutting one of the ingredients even just once a week if you know we can get you know half of the uk doing that it, ma it makes it it makes a huge difference I mean, we hope to be the number one uh, supplier of it's edible insects yeah. uh, as well as the kind of the number one brand for all things edible insects because not only we're we doing the events, um, but we kind of we're looking at distribution as well. So we sell them um, on the over the online shop at the moment, and our, ours are the only ones that are um, cookable as well. You can actually buy them and you can cook with them as well. So yeah. a lot of the ones that are out there in the market at the moment are kind of pre-cooked and pre-seasoned. But what we kind of want to do is we want we want to get people cooking with it. So online we have a blog. We have a recipe. We have a recipe section um, just to kind of help people, kind of, because it's obviously understandable. It's a new ingredient, and even our chef, when he first got it, he was like, I'm "Not sure how to cook with this." So, yeah. people buy it. They need a little bit of kind of guidance, and hopefully, our website will do that. But the long-term aim of Grub is actually to start farming them, to start rearing insects in the UK. I mean, the whole one of the whole things is about the sustainability of them, and insects they can be grown anywhere they can be reared anywhere they can be reared in um, a, a garage or a lock up in the city mm. you know they don't need much light they don't need much space and this is their natural habitat so it's not like chicken battery farming where you know chickens they need space whereas mm. insects generally in their um, in their natural environments they don't need a lot of space so um, you know the long term aim of kind of grub is to rear our own insects so we kind of manage our own supply but also to kind of stop encouraging people to start doing it themselves.